is lab number five, privileged identity management. So in this lab, we'll um, explore what privileged identity management can do. So let's start by uh, heading to the PIM section. Go right on top, type in uh, PIM. All right, so the PIM service covers directory roles. Uh, you can access directory roles from Azure AD roles or RBAC roles. That's specific to subscriptions, resource groups, uh, roles. So we're going to start with Azure AD roles. We're going to assign AAD user. So we're going to add assignment. The role is billing administrator. AAD user 2. All right, so making this assignment with PIM, we have a choice between eligible and active. Eligible assignment requires the users to activate the role after signing on to receive the privileges defined in that AD roles. Active assignment is our traditional approach. As soon as you are assigned this role, uh, the moment you sign in, you have these privileges available to you. So now we're going to make eligible, and this will be uh, made permanent, or you can say this assignment will end, and this assignment will be removed automatically when the time expires in a year. This is an example. For our exercise, uh, we'll just make it permanently eligible. So now we're going to navigate to uh, settings. In the settings, you will find for each role, what is the nature of, uh, of the role. For instance, certain roles are more uh, a higher privileged. So perhaps the activation of that role requires an approver. Or a certain uh, role should not be permanently assigned. Okay, so in the settings is where you can uh, specify roles. All right, so you can also access that through uh, manage roles. Okay, so these are all the roles as well. So here, let's go to, oops, not billing, global reader. So we can also go to role settings this way. Click on edit. All right, so here we can say once you activate this role, we will require justification. How long will the user receive the privilege de uh, defined in this role and require approval? So we're going to make AAD user 3 the approver. All right. Whether or not to allow this role to be assigned permanently, or do you, uh, whether uh, you want to allow permanent active assignment, which allows them to just sign in and get the privilege. Okay. So if you disallow it, or allow it. Okay. If you disallow it, you will assign a maximum active assignment period. So that means uh, you can choose any amount of time shorter than six months, but you will not be able to give active assignment longer than six months. Same drill here. So if you allow, uh, if you don't allow permanent eligible assignment, you can say what's the maximum duration. All right. So we're gonna. Leave them at default, otherwise all pretty uh, self-explanatory. All right, where, uh, whether or not we should receive notifications upon activation. All right. So notifi notify when members are assigned as eligible. 
when members are assigned as active. So we'll receive an email telling us someone has been assigned to this role. And we can also say we would like to be notified when one actually activate these roles. All right, so we don't have to constantly review the request. We don't need to constantly review uh, the membership. We'll just be notified of it. All right, so we're going to make an assignment to the global reader. Again, we're going to select the AD user 2. All right, so make sure it is an eligible assignment. So in a global reader uh, settings, just want to make sure I map to the lab exercise. So in the assignment, we will not allow permanent eligible assignment. I missed that step. So we're going to set that to maximum of one year. So I'm going to update that. Okay, now let's go back to the assignment. All right, so notice right now it says, well, you can't do permanent assignment. You can give it a year. Okay, so if you want more than a year, it will also tell you the maximum is a year. You can go lower, but not higher. Okay, so this eligible assignment means the user is eligible to activate this role for the next X amount of days. Task number three, we're going to give a user permanent assignment to the role. This is task three, exercise one. We're going to assign AAD user two to security admin. So default directory, roles, security admin. Add assignment. All right, so this will be an eligible assignment and this will be permanent eligible because our role allows it. It's in the role settings. All right, now we're going to sign as AAD user 2 to test activation of roles so we're going to activate roles that requires uh, that doesn't require approval and also activate roles that does require approval All right, so once user sign in to activate roles, head over to PIM, head over to My Roles, now with the three uh, role assignment, Building Administrator can be activated without approval. So let's click on Activate. All right, so here's a reason. All right, so after some time, the uh, portal will refresh and it will tell you you have just activated a role. And this will tell you what is your current activated roles. So you will have access as building administrator until that end time. Now we're going to try to activate another role that will require 
approval. All right, so you see the message your request is pending approval. Now navigate back to the pin. You can select my request to check on the status as in the, at the moment still pending approval. Okay, you also have the choice to cancel this request. So I spawned up another private window signed in as AAD user three, which is the approver. And I'm going to go back to PIM three as the approver. And approve requests. All right, and you can see that this is a row activation requests. Go ahead and approve this. All right, so I'm switching the tab back as AAD user two. My request has disappeared. Let's take a look at my roles. So because the approval was made by AD user three, uh, you'll see the global reader privilege is ready for use. Now, if AD user two is done with its work, we should tell the user to proactively deactivate these privileges, to surrender these privileges. Next, exercise three, we're going to take a look at another feature within the PIM, which is the access review feature. The purpose of access review is to ensure that people we assigned to privileges or uh, groups really need to stay in those groups. So we, are, we want to set up a regular review, review process, uh, review the members of those groups, and try to ensure that we provide justifications why they are in those groups. All right, so to start the process, we uh, begin with PIM. In the PIM, select uh, Manage AD Roles. Okay. Now you'll find the section called Access Reviews. We would like to create a regular review All right, so because I'm AAD user two, I'm actually not the PIM administrator. So uh, I'm not the privileged access administrator. So I need to use the different account. So here I'm back to the uh, PIM admin. So let's try this again. So now I'm going to create a new access review for the global reader. And the start date is today. We're going to start the review today. It's just a one-time review. Now this will uh, run until uh, perhaps end of the month or however duration that's reasonable for people to provide their justification. Now we want to uh, Look at all the uh, members of that group. Now here we can say who should, well, the role that we, we want to uh, perform our access review. So this is global reader. All right. And who should perform the review? Should uh, member themselves review and provide justification, or should a designated user account be responsible? So I'm going to select my own account, VC2020.
Now, during this review process, we're going to collect feedback. Some user will state they continue to need these row assignment, and some user will say they don't need this row assignment. You could say you could also make the results automatically apply to those 80 rows. So if user says, I no longer need this permission, this will automatically apply those changes. Now, if the user do not respond to this access request, uh, access review request, you can go ahead and simply either continue to approve them or remove their access, right? or take some built-in recommendations. I'm going to disable that. And this starts the access review process. So creating the access review can take up to two or three minutes. So let it finish thing. And uh, once you can see the access review showing up in the tab, as a reviewer, you can go to Review Access and select this access review. At the moment, AAD User 2 belongs to this group. And here is where we can say Approve to keep this user in the global reader or Deny to remove them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and approve this. Now you can follow along with the progress by heading over to Access Reviews. You click on this Access Review, and it's going to tell you uh, out of this role, there is one member, and it has been approved. Now here is also an option to stop the review process because at this point 100% of the user has been reviewed. So we can stop this review. Now keep in mind these access review can be scheduled to run every quarter, uh, every month, every year. Depends on the security sensitivity. Alright, so go back to the default directory. We can look at the alerts settings all right so these are things we can configure to be notified all right so if you have roles that doesn't require mfa administrators aren't using their roles at all okay organization doesn't have p2 or certain roles being activated too frequently so these are conditions that you would like to be notified of All right, so back to PIM. So in the PIM overview, you'll see the uh, role activation in the last seven days assignment. So this gives you a glance if your uh, team members are taking advantage of this feature and their activity with this PIM service. All right, so within this PIM, you also have the ability to perform resource audit. Okay, so all the activities that has been performed within this PIM system, you can see who requested this activity and what has been performed. And the primary target, and whether it's successful or not. So this makes sure that everything is very traceable and highly visible. Now at the end of this lab exercise, you should clean up uh, the VM created from module 4 even though uh, I'm not 100% certain why uh, we're using that VM4 but it was there created in the last lab so let's go ahead and get rid of it uh, if you're doing this exercise with a brand new tenant time to clean up the tenant instructions at the tail end of lab number 5 alright so we're gonna continue and wrap up this lab number 5